Fun okay. is greater than rules? Fun is greater than rules. Set up the tents in the middle of nowhere just by ourselves and drink all the beer, like that's still <laughs> success. Wait, what's in this? Several drinks. <laughs> not knowing where we're going yeah. and not exactly caring. What if this is all I ever want to drink now? <laughs> Definition of freedom and success to me is to be able to wear flip-flops, man. I wasn't trying to find a way to like, how do I make as much money as I can off this? Yeah. I looked at it as like, how can I make this my life? Hey everybody, welcome to the show. As always, this is a show about failure or missteps or you know, fails, face plans. It's when, it's when you have this really, really great idea and you get really excited and you tell all your friends and, and you, you go out there, you buy the domain name, you get, you, you get the website, you write an email to your mom to impress her and then all of the hard work settles in. The, oh my God, what have I done settles in. The mistakes come in and that's what we're gonna be talking about tonight. And this is gonna be a special show because we've got Tate Morgan from the Gambler 500. It's a road rally event. Think about cannonball run, off-road type of thing that we're doing. And I met with Tate in his car before we came here. And it's, uh, it's a lot of fun. I think you're gonna enjoy it. Take a look. Are we good? Yeah. This is the weirdest uh, interview I've ever done, by the way. <laughs> Quick pause here because it's an opportunity. Okay. Traction control off, overdrive off, and we hit the little power button right here, and that will give us a little extra boost that we need to get on this corner in like a more lively way. Yeah, than, well, than this we is a really would. lively so, road. Yeah, I'm so teaching you how to, to use cheap, lively cars. You need it. Yeah, uh, I've been labeled a green decoy. <laughs> Are you gonna ask? Yeah. What's a decoy? What's a green, What's de a green decoy? Green decoy is, uh, is an organization that seems to be kind of, you know, all machismo and, and uh, with a, you know, a right wing, and then uh, and then you trick them into doing a bunch of lefty stuff like picking up trash. I want to teach you how to do burnouts. Okay, okay. What I do. And, a, and, a, and a burnout, I, I think I know what a burnout is, is the tires like make smoke. There's somebody filming us. Right now? Yeah, there's somebody got the camera out. Oh, wait, it's your guys. They <laughs> <laughs> said we came to the wrong place. <laughs> Most of the time I get like kind of a fanboy response. Somebody's like, because they'd heard of the gambler. Yeah. Um, but they, yeah, they, I think they're scared of management. They don't think management. They, they had heard of the gambler. Yeah, oh yeah, they heard of the gambler. Oh, but they said they, they don't think management has a sense of humor. <laughs> I'm just, we're trying to find someone who likes to party. Right? Is this enough room to do a burnout? We'll go see if we'll go see if. Uh, no, this see if works a lot. Like when you walk in, see. Well, so far, no. <laughs> we should have been doing this the whole time. That, yeah, that was elegant. Very, very yeah, Dukes of Hazard. Very Dukes of Hazard. Oh, okay. Yeah, swap seats. We're gonna swap seats. Yeah. Oh okay. God. Okay. Okay. So you wanna? Did you wanna get behind the wheel of this beast and yeah, yeah. feel the raw yeah, power? Yeah. Okay. Feel the raw. <laughs> yeah. Totally. Just, you know, just have at it. Okay, hold, hold no, on. no, this is important. Yeah. I'll, I'll, I'll wait. I'll wait. Okay. Not, I'll wait. not that I don't trust you. This is kind of the best time ever. That's what. That's what we sell. We sell experiences. Right. Yeah. yeah. Well, we're getting on the freeway now. Okay. okay. Now, is, now is gonna be the only time you can maybe like punch the. Right. No, 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 no. Okay. No, 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 no. Stand on the brake. Now hold down the gas. Hold down the gas. Yeah. Hold down the gas. All the way. All the way. Let it go. Let it go. Nope. All the way. Fun. All the way. Yeah, it's a river. Everyone, drop it in a second. <laughs> Yeah. So what did I tell you? Like I know I know a lot about cars. Like I'm like a car genius. <laughs> but before we talk, we've got to do a special drink, of course, for Tate. Uh, you know, like something something yeah, not safe. Jack, what are we going to be making for what are we going to be making for Tate tonight? Thank you very much, Sean. Tonight I've got a fantastic drink for you. Rye, whiskey, bourbon, whiskey, a little bit of rum, some Benedictine. Uh, called the 500 Sons of Smoky. We're going to use Zaya rum, ounce and a half per each drink. So in this case, I'm going to do four drinks. We're going to have six ounces of rum in here. And then we have the Elk Rider from Heritage Rye Whiskey. Two ounces of that, half ounce each, four drinks. 
And then it's a quarter ounce of Benedictine, so a full ounce will do for the full build of this drink. And two dashes of orange bitters per drink. And here is the fun part. This drink is actually served in a burning ring of fire. I use a little bit of Old Granddad 114, and I pipette it onto the wood block. In our ceramic container here, I have a little bit of apple wood foam. And then we add dry ice to the tea kettle. We set our ring on fire and we smoke the cups individually. That's the 500 sons of smoking. Hey everybody, welcome to the show. Uh, on this show, I have tape from uh, Gambler. 500, we'll let him talk about it uh, a little bit more. Welcome, welcome to the show. Hey, thanks for having me. <laughs> yeah, this place is nice. You look good. Hey, oh, 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 this man, I just, yeah. I just threw this on. You just threw it I on? just threw it on, man. Yeah, where'd you, uh, that's got a Legends of the Fall uh, feel to it. Yeah, like, uh, yeah, kind of, you know, Chicago 70s. The you bear, feel the inside the of it, it's really soft. of this, like, uh, oh, I don't no, know. that's nice. Yeah, it is pretty nice. Yeah, it's a little bit smoother than the outside. Yeah. No, 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 no. Uh, they say fame and recognition you changes from, you, but not not me. I'm not you. Just yeah, just same you're guy set. I've always been. Yeah. Like, <laughs> you're yeah, you're you're cool as <laughs> like looking at you. This is gonna be really hard for me, because uh, I've got like uh, uh, like a Japanese Star Wars shirt on, and oh. you're. Uh, you're but you know, I can out. take the. I'm gonna take the jacket off. You, so. you think so? Yeah, I'll I don't trade. Know. If you want to wear the jacket, no, I'll trade. No, and I'll no, take the Star Wars shirt. No, I don't think I can pull off the jacket. You've got something going on. There's oh, is a, it? Oh. A little like. Pot. Yeah, there you oh, go. Nice. Get get it down. Tell me about the the Gambler 500. Oh yeah, okay. I gotta stop that with the glasses there. Ah, <laughs> uh, the Gambler. Yeah, the gambler. No, <laughs> like, now we're going into business mode. Well, okay, now no, no, I'm actually right? like, I'm gonna drop drop the, <laughs> the whole deal. Uh, gambler 500. Yeah, it's a something that's stupid that my friends and I started six years ago that was never supposed to lead to an interview in your basement. Um, <laughs> And and now it's just it's evolved into this crazy big worldwide rally brand thing that's yeah. just been uh, been a really fun ride. So uh, cars that race across actually every like uh, like across Oregon is that uh, we have every state. Yeah, it's it's hard to track down. But yeah, Oregon, um, pretty much every state in the U.S. We have three or four in Canada. I just got back from Iceland, which is the real reason why I have this coat. Is I, uh, we did an Iceland expedition. <laughs> did you get it in Iceland? No, my mother-in-law made it for me. She made it for yeah, you. Yeah, yeah, she's amazing. Yeah, your mother-in-law made your bear coat. My mother -in -law, well, actually, this is kind of the the demo. We're actually going to do. We're going to start a Kickstarter and try to make like a bunch of these, but like more like bathrobes. Like bathrobe revenant style coats. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> bathrobe makes it's revenant style. Same old coats. story, you know. Yeah. The guy starts a rally, Say, starts uh, a coat line. That's what happens. Yeah. yeah. Uh, the Gamma 500 itself is an outdoor navigation adventure challenge where we also have competitive trail cleanups along the way. It makes zero sense, but that's why it's so much fun. It's because fun is greater than rules is our you know, our basic premise of it. We're never fun is greater than rules. Fun is greater than rules. Yeah, I think that that's. Um, most motorsports start from a, a, a rule book and yeah. this, this concept that the race is the most important part of it, which we really know that the experience of it is the most important part. And so yeah. you know, there's only one winner to a race, but like at the end of the day, everybody who comes on the Gambler is a winner. What's your, like, what's your favorite part about it? Then? My favorite part of this, the Gambler, is the fact that I get to now make it my lifestyle, make it my, my life. Yeah. Um, but the favorite part of participating is being out alone with like my friends in some weird car on a gravel road not knowing where we're going yeah. and not exactly caring yeah right like it's a navigation challenge we just don't know where we're headed and it doesn't matter we break down there we camp and and set up the tents in the middle of nowhere just by ourselves and drink all the beer like that's still <laughs> success you still won so i like that you, you call it a navigation challenge and so i picture like orienteering going out but like the, like the cars that go out the Gambler 500 or any of these, they don't look like normal cars all the time, right? They, they yeah. Something. It's a mix. And you see that on social media as the big crazy ones. But at the end of the day, as we were talking about earlier, is, yeah, is yeah, that, yeah. That, that the funnest thing to do would be to take your old Toyota Yaris? Uh, Echo. Uh, to, whatever, yeah, whatever. Toyota Echo. Yeah. And, and take it over these gravel roads and explore with your friends, not having yeah. any sort of car knowledge or wanting to race per se, but you just had this adventure together in a really approachable way. Well, which is what, which is what we did in, in high school. Yeah. Like I like I couldn't afford anything that would actually go on gravel. I mean, we were at, when uh, rock climbing, mountain biking, whatever. You just attach it to the car somehow, yeah. 
and then go out on the gravel roads and run with it from there. And, and that's my secret, is that I didn't invent this, I just gave it a name. Like yeah. most kids were out rallying dumb, cheap cars because that's all they had, and they just didn't have a call sign. And now they see the, 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 the skull and the deal, and now they know that this guy is like, like them, likes to go hooning around in cars. And so it's like drifting started that way too. Wait, likes, likes to go doing what around in cars? Ho hooning? Hooning? Hooning, what, yeah. Wait, what does hooning mean? Hooning is, is, is yeah, doing, um, it was, it was, it was Things you're not really supposed to do in cars. You're whipping them around. <laughs> like what? Yeah, I mean like uh, brake stands. Brake stands. Uh, you know, we tried burnouts. to do a brake stand. Yeah, that's hooning. You tried to teach. That's a hooning in a yeah. car. That's good. You yeah. Ever bang the rev limiter like we did. The rev limiter. The rev limiter. Yeah, yeah. when it gets up and uh, yeah. makes a sound. Uh, ding 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 ding. Yeah. <laughs> that. that. Yeah. All right, Jack. What what are we drinking? Uh, we're drinking the uh, 500 Sons of Smoky. What if this is all I ever want to drink now? <laughs> That's going to get really complicated. That is also the goal. <laughs> this is awesome. <laughs> this is awesome. You're, in, you're, you're in dreamland. I've watched your all your previous episodes. This is the best No, one. this is the best now, one. No, this is a special ingredient. Yeah. For you, we're going to keep it woodland. Uh, we have a apple wood foam. Tastes like apple wood. Feel free to add it to your drinks as you see fit. There's a spoon in there for you. Cheers. Awesome. Okay, cool. Uh, cheers. Yeah. yeah. Nostrovia. Here Nostrovia. we go. Nostrovia. I thought it was going to be warm. <laughs> <laughs> I'm happy that it's not. Yeah. I thought it was going to be warm, too. Wait, what's in this? Several drinks. <laughs> <laughs> Any one of them's enough. But together? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Did you, so once you started, I, I mean, is this your business now? The yeah. Gambler 500, this is it. Oh, it's, it's There's no it's, side gigs, there's nothing else that you do. I have the race, and you have the, you have this. I, yeah, uh, I, I think that move is, would, would have evolved now into like a little bit of a serial entrepreneur. Yeah. Because um, I'm always looking for things. I have about, about nine LLCs. And so uh, some of them are gambler based, you know, it's selling swag and stuff. I brought you some sunglasses though, by yeah, the way. Yeah, oh, like we got sunglasses. Are they, they look like those sunglasses? No, they're a little bit more um, uh, tempered. Tempered? Yeah. They just look like normal or. It's in, normal uh, it's in camouflage. Uh, yeah, I don't know. Is that don't part of the... Place. No, that's just the heat wave back. We partnered with them, but they got a little branded logo thing. Oh, yeah, no, they've got the Gambler, um, the Gambler 500 set on there. But I have, a, I still have a construction... Uh, like after that, I went into uh, um, uh, real estate. After I'd learned... Dude, those look good. I know they look... No, I have no idea. They're like, perfect they're like, for your face. They're perfect for my face? Yeah. Yeah, I believe you. Uh, no, uh, they, they really they, do look yeah, good. They really do look up my okay. too. No, yours look. Uh, yours so look I, I did. The, my wife went to law school, and uh, I worked real estate through that. Sold like houses, made like a hundred grand. When you I married. Was, like, you married a lawyer. I didn't. Well, yeah. I well, worked, glad she, a lawyer. She was. Yeah, I was and dating. Then she became a lawyer. I was dating her yeah, in college. Yeah. She was like she cheered at U of O, and then she said, "I'm going to law school," and I was like, "I'm hitching my wagon to you." <laughs> and so, and it was a great decision because she is super smart, beautiful, and keeps me in line. And has really made this a lot of this possible, um, just by having a solid base where I wasn't always having to be the breadwinner, because I was for a long time. I worked, you know, 60 hours a week building houses, um, and and then went through the big recession. Yeah. Um, got laid off. My wife got laid off. Um, our house, which we had put like half down on it. Yeah. It was worth half as much. Like yeah, I had yeah, to yeah, Tuck yeah. tails. Go back to Portland from Bend. Uh, move in with my father-in-law. And take a job at his uh, moving and storage company. Yeah. And we were my we the second kid on the way, and yeah. it was like, oh, bottom. And that was like, <laughs> bottom. But like, um, well, you seem like you seem like the type of guy that even that would be, I don't know. Like, I'm not gonna say like happy, like all the time. But you seem like you you, I don't know. Like you'd make the best of things. Yeah, you're like that, you that as whatever you got. I was the saddest a happy guy could be. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes, it's all relative, right? <laughs> it is. I was in a bad spot, but I was motivated to yeah. get out. I was and you like, had a, and you you had a kid at that time too. I had okay. one kid already. Yeah, yeah moved back in with a long, amazing guy. I, yeah, I yeah, love yeah. that's one of my best friends. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I just the the my for my personal ego, I, I couldn't I couldn't raise a kid in my father in law's house. Like even yeah. I mean, we were there for like three months, four months, and you know took well, you the moved job out I did when you were eighteen. Yeah. Yeah. 
And so was that the real estate? No, that was. I was working for his moving and storage company, and you know the goal was maybe to work me into you know management and ownership at some point. Yeah. But I found out that I don't like moving and storage. <laughs> Well, I think you found out you don't like a lot of things. Yeah, which is great, which is I thought about the failure part of this driving up here. Oh, I took notes. Yeah. I didn't. It would be irresponsible. <laughs> why, why would I take, yeah, I take notes about all my failures. It's all about humility Yeah. Um, to me and, and, and not caring about what other people think of you. Yeah. It's like that is true freedom, right? Like you're not like, why, that's the re reason why I wore flip-flops today. Yeah. <laughs> because in my past life, yeah. I could have never worn flip-flops to work. Uh, I would like someone would say that's that's unacceptable. Yeah. And definition of freedom and success to me is be able to wear flip flops, man. Yeah. And if you showed up uh, and he was like, "Who's this dirt bag? Get out of get him out of here!" I'd be like, "All right, later, bro." And I would have done a, a Bernie <laughs> in your parking lot, and we would have left. But like, like, but you weren't. You're were like, "Cause cool flip flops. Let's go drive." Like, yeah, yeah, so yeah, yeah, it was yeah. great. Like you'll let anybody take it and run with. Yeah. It, which is actually great. I love. Yeah. That you're doing the like people can take it and run with it um, and putting it together. But what like how how do you how do you turn that into a business? This is something that I struggled with in the beginning because yeah. I didn't want to ruin something that was so fantastic. And, yeah. and in turn, you're basically you know putting out that fire by smothering it with with uh, you know trying to t hold it too close. Yeah. And so I wasn't trying to find a way to like how do I make as much money as I can off this? Yeah. I looked at it as like how can I make this my life? So I'm not looking to make billions of dollars on, on Gambler. I just want to make sure that I can spend every breathing yeah. minute doing the thing that I love instead of having to do something else to support a hobby. Yeah. And so, yeah, there I could have been rich, much richer like earlier on by coming at this a different way, but I'm not a great businessman. Yeah. What I'm great at doing is creating fun things for people to go do. And so I just focused on creating as much fun as possible. And that thing that my mom always said, do what you love, the money will follow. Yeah. Kind of came ringing in my ears, and yeah. that's and that's and it's worked. Yeah, no, I make I, I can exist and support my family just by the, the Costco method of fun. Provide as much fun for everybody as possible at value yeah. prices. So, do you think that there's any type of like normal job that you would like? Or is it always going to be sort of well, entrepreneur I, with everything you got set up? You've had a taste of that, right? Yeah, I liked I liked my job, my last job job that I had because after the recession yeah. and after you know starting a, another business that ultimately failed, I blamed the economy, but yeah. who knows? I didn't know if I was going to be any good at it anyways. Yeah, um, took a job in the building and in building materials industry. I was a sales rep. And yeah, so I was running around being a sales guy, and um, and I would always recommend any entrepreneur to go be a salesperson because yeah. ultimately, if you're trying to get something off the ground, you have to you may not be selling what it is you sell, but you're selling your company. You're gonna sell and anyways. So, yeah, like you got to have those interpersonal skills. You got to know who to talk to. Yeah, you know, and and how to kind of get whatever it is off the ground. So I I really value that, um, and I probably would have stayed there, and it was great, making great money. Yeah, and um, that's when I had a little personal trauma. Uh, come through. I, I developed a testicular cancer. Um, what which, really? Uh, but yeah, uh, found it myself through a self exam. Anybody out there? Hey, could do that. Take care of yourself. Um, but, but, yeah. So yeah, uh, went to the doc and super fast. Uh, and and I said, hey man, this doesn't feel right. And he's like, gets down. He's like, yeah, it doesn't feel right. <laughs> And then, and then he says, "Go get an ultrasound." And I was yeah. like, "Went to go get the ultrasound." And I was like, "Oh, whoa!" Every time I've been an ultrasound, there was a lady doing it. Yeah, 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 yeah. This yeah, would yeah, be yeah. fun. Yeah. I was a dude. Yeah, um, got to fit it on the shelf. So we hang out there for a while, and and uh, they send the slides back to my um, my urologist. Uh, she uh, then later informs me that it's it's cancer. Oh wow! That that's the very same day. And that, she says, "What are you doing tomorrow about two o'clock in the afternoon?" What? And I was like, "She's like, yeah, I'm gonna come in. We're gonna chop it off." Yeah, I know. I know. I was like, dude, it was actually a blessing. Yeah, I don't like, I, I, like. I don't know why I'm reacting that way to something like that because obviously it would be a blessing. I, I reacted that way. Well, because <laughs> yeah. like, come in tomorrow at two thirty. We're gonna chop it off. But I was, I far wanted to just get that poison out of my body. Yeah, so it's like, yeah, let's yeah, go yeah, back. Yeah. Let's get in there and do it. And like as they were like putting the gas on me, she's like, oh yeah, by the way, it's malignant. So like you know, you have you know, stage you know one or two. One we or don't two. know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You, we'll you find, may you we'll, may not wake we'll up. We'll find out. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, yeah. So count, wake up. Count, count backwards. I'm on drugs for like three days. I kind of forget that. I was still answering my phone though because I was still the sale, the building <laughs> product salesperson. And I'm on like heavy medication and still like still trying to. I was dealing with roofing shingles. I think at the point and that was just really exciting. Uh, but I love I love working. Like and, I, and it was all about those personal relationships I had. So I didn't want to leave anybody hanging. So. Uh, and then I kick out of that. So then um, they said I was going to have to do chemo. Yeah. And uh, and then I, I got a uh, in my oncologist's office, and he says, hey, you know, you're about 50-50 right now on on needing to do that. So if you're willing to wait, 
it's not gonna drive you crazy. Like yeah, we yeah, could just yeah, wait yeah. and in, in, in and five, find out whether in five or not it's years technically bad. is when you're it's gonna. Yeah, yeah. But it says it, nobody wants chemo. And, yeah. And so I, I opted for that option, and I'm three and a half years Cl like clean now. And that's like yeah, the nasty one's not gonna come back. And they yeah, said yeah, their chances yeah, yeah, are yeah. very very low. So I had like one yeah. CT scan. So what? Mm. All in the same time, like mm -hmm. like just one day you go in, the next day you go in, and yeah, facing mortality, so man. So what does that do? Like, uh, what, did Gabler come after? Yeah, he came almost during. We were doing the fun thing, you know, as like the dad getaway thing. Yeah. Um, and then I was working the building materials, and I was having a hard time balancing my health and my job and my family. I was sleeping one hour a night. My heart would just, I'd just stare at the ceiling. I wasn't taking care of myself or my family, and yeah. so ultimately I said, this job has to go. And luckily, I was in a place where. Um, my, you know, my wife could kind of, you know, she could, you know, pull the support you plow and support and what's going yeah, on. And yeah, and yeah, yeah. family and everything. And she was very supportive of it. Inadvertently now, I've got all this time and energy to just, about the same time as when our viral video came out. Yeah. 20 million views on, on Facebook <coughs> and, and Instagram. Wait, and so the, the, was the video of just you and your friends going across? Yep. Our dumb, stupid little thing, this video we did with Chubbies. We just gave them all of our cell phone uh, uh, footage. So everybody reached out and said, hey, we want to come do this thing. And I was like, well, it's not really a thing for like thousands of people, but what if it was? Yeah. And then at the same time, I also said, uh, why don't you start one where you are? And so now all of a sudden you've got the, in, in Alabama and in Florida and New York and, and California and all those places, you've got these people who just said, oh, we're going to just imitate this thing that we saw online. We'll do the same thing. And, and as long as I going to say, as long as you don't monetize it, yeah. and as long as you pick up trash along the way yeah. and, and be a, a benefit on the environment. So uh, like one thing that I'm curious about, and I don't understand completely, so if it's Gambler 500, you have to go 500 miles. Yeah. And so you have other people that start it and just put together their own 500 mile whatever, and then they have lots of people do it, or do you try to meet? It's Burning Man, it is the, it is the, it is the, the national gambler. Yeah, that's Everybody why you comes have the here. coat. They drive from New York, they drive from all over the country, from yeah. the, I have people in Africa and Europe and Asia, who are all buying tickets, I can see on the heat map where they all come from. They're all coming down, yeah. all this big, fun, crazy party, celebrating crazy cars in this culture we have. Okay. That culture stems from, like, when we broke, I was watching what was going on with technology and content, and it's very much open source. Okay. And so it seems impossible and it's kind of self-defeating to try to be far too onerous over what, what this great thing yeah, is. Yeah, and so yeah, if you yeah, try yeah. to go in and it might be an attorney, I could send letters, cease and desist to people that, that are gonna uh, you know, steal our logo. Um, and, then, and then I could also get mad and frustrated when people are trying to copy us. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But what if, what if I didn't give anybody a reason to copy us and said, hey, why don't you just do, don't you, why don't you do copy us? Copy thing. every yeah, piece yeah, yeah, about yeah, yeah. it. Yeah. Use our logo, use the flag, and so. There you go. We had this big, great, success, successful thing that everybody wanted me to charge us stacks of money for, but I was like, I'd rather have more people do this yeah. since it's fun and I'd attract the right people. This is a good than, idea, and if yeah. it's a good idea, you want people to take advantage of the good idea. And I ultimately wanted a brand. Yeah. I'd, owning a, a car rally is, is very, it's just a lot of liability in that. Yeah. Um, so I wanted to own a brand. I wanted to do things like make whiskeys and make t-shirts and make this stuff and, like, right. and kind of like, like, uh, lead a culture into what I think is cool. And I found just all these other people who also thought it was cool. I found people who are way cooler than me yeah. out there during this whole thing. And so, and it's just been, it's been neat, but it's, and we're near three, but we are the largest rally in the world by, I mean, I don't know what a fathom is, but what's it's fathoms. Like, like what? <laughs> fathoms. Fathoms. But no, yeah, I mean, we're, we're bigger by participation than, than Baja, the Baja 1000 yeah. by, by the Mint 400. These are, you know, these are races, but yeah, yeah. Um, there are also, you know, there's rally, the biggest car event in basically the world. Well, what have you, like, what have you learned doing it? I think that what we did today for me exemplifies success. Cause you give me long enough, I was gonna find a place where we were gonna burn out. Yeah. And all those different failures and the different businesses that I did shudder, you know, like that was all a lesson. So every single, every single job I got fired from or every single job that you know, I had to quit because of any personal reasons, I took something away from that. Yeah. And so you're not a failure if you fail, like, like you just learn and you pivot and move on. Yeah. Do you have other I, like, other things that you want to do or things that are in the hopper or Everything. things that you want, like uh, nonstop? Oh, I'm glad you asked this question. <laughs> so of all the different little LLCs that I own, I find people who are as excited about I am about things that we're doing. And then we say, well, what can we do to make a thing that would make like you as happy as I am? And I have yeah, yeah. my friend, good friend Chuck Brazier. 
and uh, and he we wanted to race, and, and gambler's not a race; it's a it's outdoor adventure. And so we started something called Hoopty Cross, where we're taking these old hoopties, and now we're racing them. The hoopty, so you're going to do a cross, we're racing beater cars. So now we're instead of being have been spending the most amount of money as you can to to go out there and win Baja or whatever it is, now you can just take your Geo Metro, whatever it is you want, take it to the racetrack, and um, and again, it's like it's it's we we celebrate the crappiest car that's out there. So. Yeah. You bring if you can come bring your you know your UTV or your trophy truck or something out there if you want. Yeah. But like the person who looks the coolest is the guy who shows up in a Geo Metro <laughs> and he's like, oh, what's up, guys? Oh yeah. Oh, you 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 spent a bunch of money on that. Cool. Okay, I'm gonna go have more fun than you later. Like, I I know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I it's, understand it, what that feels like. Yeah. It's the parking lot pimping versus like the actual like <laughs> going out there and actually doing it. And actually doing it. Well, uh, uh, listen. Thanks. Thanks for being on the show. Dude, this is. Fun. Yeah. Like I. <laughs> Yeah. But thanks for uh, inviting me to your basement. Yeah. No. I like uh, honestly. I think what you're doing is amazing. I love. I love the the the, the attitude that you have with it. I think it's all um, spot on for people that uh, like. I get evangelical about this type of stuff where I'm so excited to see anybody making something that they care about or something that they love. And uh, I think you're obviously doing that. I, I thought we were going to tie in GoDaddy at some point. Like, so I had all my GoDaddy references. Did like, you? Yeah, literally the first thing that happened when yeah, when, my, like when, my when when my when my Facebook in. video like went went viral, I was yeah. like, oh crap! I need to own Gambler500.com. GoDaddy. <laughs> I did it. <laughs> Thank you, Jack. Oh, my pleasure. My pleasure. Hey everybody, thanks for watching. And if you like what you saw, uh, you think that this is you know all all sorts of fun, then subscribe and ring the bell. Uh, click on the bell and then you get you get notified when something glorious is going to happen And if you have a screw-up or something you want to talk about here then go to fups.com. Hope to see you on the show